at five. We're now talking about President Obama and his camp's so-called Plan B to re-election in case they run into some trouble. Um, last week in the New York Times, Bob, uh, David Axelrod, the head of the campaign for President Obama, one of his closest advisors and friends, said there's a lot of ways for us to get to 270, meaning electoral votes, and it's not just the traditional map. That's why we're laying the groundwork across the country to compete on the widest possible playing field next year. Now, every presidential candidate says that. But one of the things that most presidential candidacies over the last few decades has known that you have to win Ohio. One of the things that the current White House is concerned about is they're uh, losing support with blue-collar workers. Um, in your mind, Bob, do they have to win Ohio in 2012 in order to win re-election? No, they, they don't, and I'm not sure that they can. I don't think that they will win Florida, for example. It used to be Florida and Ohio were the two keys. Florida will go Republican because I still can't imagine anybody not picking Rubio as a vice presidential candidate. Mm. I agree. The rest of the South is pretty much gone to Obama. Uh, I can't imagine he's going to do well, except for the two places they really need, and that's North Carolina and Virginia, which they won last time, and they are now more Democratic than they were in 2008. He's going to have to win in Missouri, and here's the big question for him. It's not Ohio. It's Wisconsin and Michigan. Those two industrial states with high unemployment. Uh, Pennsylvania, the Republicans talk about it, it will be Democratic. But then you've got to move west, and you've got to go places where traditionally were Republican. And here's the states that I think that they're looking at. They're looking at Colorado, which they won, and they've got to win it again, and I think Ken with a margin. New Mexico and Arizona which had it not been John McCain there last time, he probably would have won it. And you've got to hold on to, to, to the Pacific West. It's a much harder course than they had before. It's doable, but it's doable without Florida and Ohio, but it's not much room for our Well, error. one of the things that they said in the article, too, was that they were counting on some demographic changes that are definitely happening all right. across the country, in particular in the West. Um, and that me meaning, basically, that the Hispanic number of Hispanics is rising in those states. Kimberly, do you think that, like in a Colorado, for instance, that there's any chance that 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 helps get them over the finish line in a state like that. They have to go for it. Of course, I think the Hispanic vote will be important, will be integral for them for their success uh, moving forward for 2012. But I don't think they can count on it. There's been some, uh, you know, defections from the Hispanic Party in terms of who they want to support. And if you look at the core values of Hispanics, Latino uh, population, being Catholic, very family values oriented. I mean, majority of the people that I know that are of Hispanic descent, like myself, are, you know, conservative and support the principles of the GOP. And they want Party. jobs. They um, want jobs and unemployment. <laughs> is killing them right now, and that's something that they will hold Barack Obama Eric, accountable Eric, you've got for. a couple of graphics right, there right. you were going to mention. Well, I, I, I hate to hold them up, but there, there have been a handful of states on both sides that are called reliably red, reliably blue, meaning the last five presidential elections have gone the same direction. <clears throat> the, the, the good news for Barack Obama is that he, right now, the last five elections, presidential, there are 242 electoral votes. They need 28 electoral votes. So a state like Florida would put them over the hump or... You know, Ohio or maybe Ohio and Pennsylvania, those type of things. So I don't know that he needs to go so far okay. out west and maybe just nail well, one down of the things some of the outside of demographics. Before I get to Greg on on messaging, outside of demographics, they're also thinking about national uh, security as a winning message. And nothing gets their buttons pushed like former Vice President Dick Cheney. Let's take a listen to what he said yesterday. <laughs> the Obama administration has clearly um, reached the point where uh, they've agreed they need to be tough and aggressive in defending the nation and using some of the same techniques that, uh, that the Bush administration did. And they need to, as I say, uh, go back and reconsider some of the criticisms they offered about our policies uh, over the years, past years. The thing I'm waiting for is uh, for the administration to go back and correct something they said two years ago when they criticized us for, quote, overreacting to the uh, uh, events of 9-11. Well, it didn't take the White House long, including the president himself, to respond today saying something I find somewhat incredible. Back in July, uh, Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta said that the strategic defeat of al-Qaeda is within reach. Mm -hmm. This week we approached the 10th anniversary yeah. of the invasion of Afghanistan. How close are we to that strategic defeat? You know, I think that we have done more in the last couple of years uh, than any time in the last 10 years. All right, Greg. Uh, that to me is a little bit of a stretch and including especially it's not a per we're all on the same team here okay? yeah and it's the intelligence community that did it but from a messaging standpoint do you think national security works or do you have something in mind well I think first on the Cheney thing I think Obama at some point needs needs to acknowledge that he has evolved 
that that all the things that he thought were bad before. Now he's using. I mean, he's avoiding court proceedings and waterboarding by blowing people up. I happen to be for that too. So it's kind of interesting. Here's the thing. I think Obama has every reason. To make the point, are you safer now than you were five years ago or four years ago? Because he's he he has the he has the the results. Yeah. These people are dropping like flies, and right. I think you know he should be able to capitalize on that. And it's clearly one, one well, of the only successes he I, had. I applaud him in this area. Yeah. I think he's been strong. I think he's been inconsistent in wanting to close the Gitmo, wanting to prosecute yeah. CIA interrogators, and trying to hold people like yeah. John you, her great Americans, accountable, saying that they wrote memos that were inconsistent and violating but, the law. Yeah, this, Why not acknowledge his predecessor? Does it help the left? I mean, no. he needs to shore up like his Bush. base. Does it, it help this, him? Listen, this is not going to be a national security election. It's going to be a domestic right. economic uh, election, and it's not going to. I, I never thought Bin Laden. Death was going to give him a whole lot of votes. I don't think this will. By the way, Cheney, before Obama apologized to Cheney, Cheney ought to apologize to the American people to get us into Iraq. Stop. But leaving that aside, Stop. Uh, wait a second. <laughs> the, the, the fact is that we go back to this. This is a domestic election, and I just don't think this is going to carry the weight all that much. I will say this. It's taken away the question that's been yeah. tagged right. on Democrats for years about not being tough on national security. It's always been a weakness that you've had to go and right. prop up. He doesn't have to do that, but he's got an awful lot of work to do. But on the I point something is, out? We've got to go. I know we've got to go, but can I point something out? I think we did this on Friday, and I think I said Mr. Obama shouldn't be taking the victory lap. He should be thanking Mr. Bush. And I, I'm pretty sure I'm the only one who said that. I think former that. Vice President Cheney heard you. I took for saying that. Yeah, you should. What do you always well, say, well, you Mr. Were, Obama? You were wrong then Somebody and you're wrong now. Somebody pat him on the back. That's how the water <laughs> All right, we got to go. We're going to have more after this break, and we'll have um, some more things for you in the break. <laughs> I don't know what I said. You meant to we'll say the fire. We'll have those for you. <laughs> you got the fire. You said it was wrong. Because you were the other. We can get too fast. Where the white sandy beach meets. What a lie.